Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of Showtimes, the movie and TV show based podcast that I host with uh, at current just Jared, who is on call with us. Say hello, Jared. Hello. I'm here. Hello. <laughs> no, the joke is you say hello, Jared. God damn, you are terrible at old timey TV stuff. Okay, it is 120. <laughs> well, now you've given away the magic. Are you happy? <laughs> I worked all day, man. <laughs> Speaking of magic, see how I rolled all that in? There you go. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about WandaVision, uh, the entire series. The final episode just premiered today. Uh, we're going to date this recording. Sure, why not? Uh, but the, we just got done. I just got done watching it. You've watched it a little bit. Yes, I have. Uh, I have, I have thoughts. I, I'm mostly very positive about this show. I thought this was very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was really good. Uh, with that said, I do have a couple of minor problems. Mostly, mostly this is just going to be me having an issue with something like as a story development in the way everything else was shaping. Okay. Uh, but the story overall follows the journey of Wanda Maximoff, who go basically goes through the seven stages of grief. Yes. And I really, really like that idea. Uh, it's one of these, I think they had the right, the right thing going into this. And I think somewhere along the way, uh, some, a producer or somebody got hold of it and said, no, you have to have these other things in here. Otherwise, it doesn't match the brand, which is okay sometimes, but uh, at the same time, it's like, uh, God, I don't know about this. I mean, for the most part, it was, it was good. It was, it was better than a lot of Marvel movies. Oh, no, it, li- it held lately. my interest far more thoroughly than basically any Marvel property past Captain America 3 and most before it. Like this was this was legitimately a great idea behind it, uh, which is what if somebody who has basically unlimited power were to have a, a bit of a mental breakdown because she had experienced so much tragedy and loss that she had uh, it just got to her and it manifested this alternate reality around her. It's a really great scenario where you can have no knowledge of the comics and you can get just as much bang out of this as somebody who has read a lot of comic books in this scenario. Yeah, it also, it, uh, a lot of comic fans, it's another take on House of M. Slightly. Not, not Slightly. quite the same, but she edits reality, not the entire reality, but yeah, she yeah. edits a entire town. Yeah, no, it, I understood... I understood the practicality behind it all. And I, I I did like how for the first like two, three episodes, you have no clue what the fuck's going on. It's just Wanda and Vision and their little sitcom happiness and you get yes. hints that, that something weird yeah, is going just, on. Yeah, everything that is going know. on you just get dropped into like hardcore dropped in. And you're just kind of left to stew and wonder as to what the hell's happening. And I was, really, I really appreciate amazing, that. Though. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, like I say, I was really, really worried that this was just going to be another bog standard. Oh, the good guy fights the bad guy type deal. And then as it started shaping up, it became less and less about that. And yeah. more Wanda working through these uh, issues that were being presented with her, and each one having a, a unique manifestation caused by her creating this own little reality around everything. Yeah, it was it was really interesting. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, I guess spoilers for the whole thing. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. yeah there's no, <laughs> there's not going to be one bit of this that isn't spoiler talk. Uh, the first, like you said, the first several episodes are her are this little TV show that kind of maneuvers through 1950s, 1960s style uh, programming, like uh, Leave it to Beaver, Bewitch, stuff like that. 
Uh, the first one, I believe, was a uh, heavy representation of the Dick Van Dyke show. Yes. And, and then uh, you have Bewitched, which was number two. And it kind of explains all this a little bit later um, yes. as uh, to what's going on. But yeah, I, I it was one of those I kind of thought this was exactly what was going on. And then it's like, oh, OK, so I was right for thinking this through on a natural level. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that comes with a bit of caveat because the way we see it is basically an introduction that comes out of left field and i don't think genuinely adds to anything in the series itself which is the uh, introduction of agatha harkness who is another super powerful uh magic user in the marvel universe yes uh like i say though the problem is she that song comes hatchy as fuck though yes yes it was she comes out of nowhere. We've already established that Wanda has created this world, that she's created these uh, scenarios to basically keep her from dealing with the problems that she's encountered in the real world. Yes. And so when Agatha gets manifested, I'm like, oh, OK, so this is going to be a part of her mind that is trying to fight the realization that she is causing this problem. That it's going to no. be a distraction. But then it turns out, oh, no, she's just actually this witch that's lived here. Oh, well. And it's no, like, she didn't live there. She she jumped in to uh, essentially was trying to steal Wanda's powers. Oh, that's right. And yeah, like I say, at the end, it just doesn't matter. And I I feel like that was a late executive decision because everything that leads up to that doesn't track with how that works. Well, I think what they are were were doing is setting up uh, Doctor Strange two in the later episodes. Possibly, but if so, wouldn't it have been better to have Doctor Strange? Well, they mentioned him. Uh, I, I the know finale. they mentioned him, but wouldn't it have been easier slash better to actually have Doctor Strange come in? I mean, I'm, I'm, I say this as somebody who has never written a hyper successful uh, television program or any television program before in my life, <laughs> mostly because my <laughs> reviews are uh, heavily unedited or unscripted. So I, I, I know people are going to say, oh, you're an armchair director and I, I'm not trying to be, but this really just kind of feels off and very awkward with the introduction of Agatha Harkness being a antagonist in this show that quite honestly did not need an antagonist. Uh, the antagonist kind of manifested in the sword higher up, but it really didn't need one beyond that. That's a very interesting idea as to what's going on. Yeah. Uh, he, that guy, you kind of suspected something was up, but you weren't too sure until right. it happened. Which, again, um, perfectly fine. If you want to introduce an antagonistic uh, force, that is a good way to do it, because then you get uh, the Vision having to confront himself, effectively, in the end, which is how he comes to a realization that he should not exist, that Westview in its current form under Wanda's control, should not be. And you get the emotional payoff that all of this has been building to, and quite honestly, it was really good. Like, I felt more for uh, Wanda and Vision in that than I did in the entire, I don't even know how long I sat in the butt-numbingly long uh, Avengers movie, where he died, and I was like, okay, Vision's gone, oh well, I don't know him. Uh, that being said, I really want to know where Paul Bettany got his inspiration for how Vision should act in this world, because I swear to God, he is channeling Rick Mayhill. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for those of you who don't know who Rick Mayhill is, Google him. He's a very interesting fellow. Uh, my personal favorite show he ever did was The Young Ones, but that's uh, for a lot of different reasons. Anyway, uh, the series progresses fairly standardly through how a sitcom should go. And you eventually find out that that was Wanda and Pietro's uh, 
childhood fondness was getting to sit down with their family in war-torn, war-torn Sokovia to watch uh, American sitcoms. Yes. And it's like, oh, okay, that's actually really interesting, and it feeds in with this being a safe space for her in her mind, and why she would use that as a backdrop to basically avoid reality, to create her own her own magical place that she could have control over. And it just kind of so happened that she accidentally absorbed everyone else in the town of Westview into that. Yeah, and you you get hints of it. Um, episodes, episode one, pretty much there's nothing happening except the guy starts to choke. Yes. And um, it takes a second. Um, and he kind of blinks out for a second, and then episode two is where the little things in color, and somebody starts talking to Wanda over the radio. Yes. And then uh, uh, the beekeeper at the end, and you're like, what the fuck is going on with that? And you I see the little totally thought they were going to try logo. and introduce AIM into that, but they didn't. Now it was kind well, of they, kinda angry. They already did a really crappy version of AIM in Iron Man 3, remember? They did? Yes, that was... I recently went back and watched all the Marvel movies. We did a marathon thing. Yeah, I, they, I don't remember Iron doing, Man 3 in general, so... Yeah, AIM was AIM was Iron Man 3. Oh, okay. Uh, that, okay, I can understand, I understand why they'd want to avoid AIM then. And then <laughs> episode 3, she has the twins. Yes. Which now, I was, I was kind of stoked and surprised that they used those two in there. Yes. Like that they actually used Wiccan and Speed in the show. Yes, uh, which actually it pulls from one of my absolute least favorite. Uh, I say that it's. Uh, I don't know why I call it least favorite. It's one of my least liked uh, comic book bits in Marvel history, which is where. They reveal that Scarlet Witch and Vision didn't actually have children. It's all been a manifestation of her mind. And she basically imagined giving birth to two kids. And it's like, what? I've, uh, where no, are you pulling kid, this bullshit out of? Her and, kids were totally real. Uh, again, yeah, that eventually got retconned. Uh, but there was a bit where they had this idea that Scarlet Witch was going crazy and she never actually had children. And it's like, what? No, that's the idea of a woman and a robot having kids in the first place is dumb, but this is extra strength grade a dumb. And (laughs) so they were able to take that plot line where she doesn't actually have children. She's manifested them and actually make that into a, not only cohesive story arc, but one that I genuinely cared about. And I, I, I give the writers props and applause for that alone. That was an incredible feat. Yeah, it's very it's also. No, I was oh, just going to say. No, I was just going to say it's very, very rare that you can take a shitty comic book idea and actually spin it into a great one. Because from the start, when this happened, I understood what was in narrative operations, how this is going to end. Eventually, the Westview thing would stop, and. The, she would have to confront the fact that they do not exist. And I think they handled it just absolutely perfectly. Yeah, they they did a really good job. And it's, then that was also the episode where you get a an idea that uh, I believe her, her alternate reality Wanda World name was Geraldine, wasn't exactly who everyone thought she was. And then we cut to episode yes. four, and find out it's actually Monica Rambo. Yes. That that's when everything kind of starts getting a little more in depth and interesting and I was uh, I was looking at it as like okay, well this is interesting but what are you going to do with this? And then they hit us with everything about this she actually does know that she's created this world and that it's a problem for everything and, or at the very least that none of this is real and yeah, that she well, the- is actually in complete control of her chaos magic scenario here or so we think well that's when uh the the sword director also he states that wanda stole vision so my head was running yes. 
scenarios on this, I'm like, oh, so she has his body parts and she's using magic to try to reform the Mind Stone or something like that. Like, I thought a scenario like that was going on. Maybe. Because she did have a flash to, like, his dead body with the the stone and see that was me what i I believe for several episodes i interpreted that as her uh as much as she wanted to stay in the dream world that she's created reality has a way of eating its way into your perfection and deep down she knew that this was not really the vision that he's dead and she will eventually have to confront this reality and it happens again when we meet uh, not Pietro, uh, yeah. and she sees him in his uh, if, with bullet holes all through him, and it's like that's really, really heavy dose of reality that she would have to face. And I, I did think it was kind of just uh, a little perfect idea of getting Evan Peters to do that role, though. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was nice to see him in there. Yeah, uh, and he he was not Quicksilver from the X Men, but uh, he was this fake Quicksilver, yes. basically. Yes, which leads into another issue with Agatha being here from the get go. Because well, it subtly hints for a few episodes that she's more like um, it. She seems more aware because she's like, "Do you want to do that again?" Like. Do, do we need to do that line over again? Like acting right, but like we've, she's that could have just been like the magic sometimes slips up. Like there's a, n- yeah. a million other reasons this could have happened like that. Like she understands her place in this, and re- if she she's come to the understanding that if she tries to fight it too hard, then it becomes more painful, and that is uh, not something she wants to go through. So she's just kind of accepted her role that this is her part in the show that has to be played. Uh, eventually uh, the vision does find her out on the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And he kind of frees her mind as he's done a couple other people at this point. And she flips out like everybody else has. And I was like, and I was like, Oh crap. Okay. This is interesting. And then when it turns out to be, it turns into Agatha all along. I was like, again, I just kind of had this idea is like, okay, so this is kind of her mind fighting, uh, the, express reality of what's happening around her and it's manifesting an obstacle so that it doesn't have to uh deal with this but nope but no they just like oh nope she's actually the super wizard from this other place and uh yeah and it's like and this is the point where we're hitting like your uh your malcolm in the middle with the 90s sitcom yeah yeah, episode. which fortunately we do not spend much time in because that is that is my least favorite sitcom era. Well, you also have uh, you also cut back to the real world though, where you have uh, Darcy. Uh, they brought uh, her back, and yeah, is Wu she still the same Ant Man, same actress? Uh, well, I know it's the same actress, but are they the same character? Yeah, same character. They're the same characters. Yeah, nice. it, it's Wu from uh, Ant Man. Um, Ant-Man 2, he was like uh, the FBI agent that was always checking in on Scott Lang. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That, okay. It, because I haven't watched it, Ant-Man in, like, ever. Well, it keeps joking about, uh, you see a little bit, because uh, Scott practiced close-up magic when he was on house arrest, and Wu was like, you know what, I, I should learn some of that. And you see him do little bits and dabs here and there. But oh, you have a okay, okay. You have Darcy from Thor, and then you have Wu uh, from uh, Ant Man and the Wasp show up, and uh, Monica Rambeau, who I think it may be the same actress who played her mom in uh, Captain Marvel. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. But yeah, she they she pops up, and I was like, oh, okay, that that's interesting. And yeah, from there we end up discovering Sword's involvement against, or yeah, against Wanda. It's perfectly fine to say that, and how he kind of this director kind of lured her in. Yeah, it it's a little roundabout how he goes about getting Vision reactivated, but it just barely makes it through. Okay, uh, 
Okay, no, I'm wrong. It is not the same actress. I did I didn't figure it was, but <clears throat> but yeah, nope. it it's a little it's a little roundabout in how he goes about getting Wanda to reactivate vision or getting the ability to reactivate vision. And I'm not super down with all of it. Like it's it's very much a an ish a thorny issue the way it's done. Yeah, it was it was one of those that when Vision was reactivated, um, they took something that Wanda had like shot down with her magic and yeah. used that to charge him. Yeah, um, I, I was and that's when okay it's with revealed. That. That's also same episode where it's revealed. No, she doesn't have Vision's body. That yes. was a lie. Yes, now, I, I was I was perfectly okay with that because I was like, okay, so he would understand that. Wanda effectively gained her power. He has access to a whole bunch of captured uh, Hydra data, which would include their experimentations on the Maximoff twins and her exposure to the Mind Stone. So knowing that, he could kind of say, okay, so her powers probably come from the Mind Stone. The Vision was powered by the Mind Stone. Therefore, if I get some of Wanda's powers, i.e. the Mind Stone powers, we could make this happen again. And I was like, okay, that's that's fine. Uh, again, he brings Wanda in first and is like, well, you're the only, uh, there's only one person around who could uh, bring the, the vision back to life. I mean, could you? And he just kind of asks that, that very leading way. I'm just like, I, I'm sorry, are you a Scooby-Doo villain right now? What, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> well, this is also the episode where you're going through basically Wanda's uh, backstory. Yes. Where you're finding out, uh, you find out the sitcom stuff, and it may have actually been her responsible for uh, causing the missile not to go off that landed in her house. Yes, which, nice little uh, callback to uh, Iron Man 1, how the uh, missile is actually Stark Tech. Uh, that has been sold on the black market yep. before uh, Tony kind of sobered up and regained control of his company. Yeah. And so you have that. And then you have her um, basically her at Hydra and then her in vision in a scene um, like right before civil war ish. Something like there. that. Some is somewhere between Civil and War then, and Avengers, whatever. When uh, Thanos invaded, well, it was it was definitely before Civil War because they were living together at the tower still. Yes, before everything happened, and then you yeah. have uh, basically her after coming back from Infinity War, trying to get Vision's body, and that leads us to basically the season premiere where she has the little energy output and right, accidentally it's, it's takes the, over Westview. They, this is kind of the part where I where I kind of emphasize having knowledge of the comics enhances your viewing experience and it is not dependent on it. Uh, you do see her just absolutely break and someone who is described as quite possibly the most powerful magic practitioner in the entirety of the Marvel Universe just overwhelmed with grief and sadness creates this bubble that she is now safe in where she has the people that she was promised the life that she uh was always wanted with her loved one and it's genuinely kind of heartbreaking the way it all comes to pass because you feel so bad for her at that point yeah and then unfortunately it, agatha starts exposition dumb dumping yeah the, like Captain i say Marvel the too. agatha Her. stuff i think is the weakest of this series and i was really really glad that in the final episode let's go ahead and jump to the final episode because everything else has just been built to well, that well there's one thing i do want to touch on before we talk about the final episode oh, too. okay you, uh, we also have monica getting her powers oh yes 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 and uh, how i think she might be the new captain marvel uh, so because she is Monica, listed as Captain Marvel at some points, she's also listed as Photon. Uh, Photon, Pulsar, or Spectrum. I think yes. Spectrum is her current alias. But yes, she was Captain Marvel in like uh the eighties, and then she was Photon and Pulsar throughout the nineties and early two thousands. And since uh 
2013, she's been Spectrum. Right. But, yeah. Uh, we have her, basically, it was already explained that she might be a little special. And then, apparently, because she went through Wanda's barrier and absorbed that much magic, uh, or got hit with so much of Wanda's magic plowing through the barriers twice, uh, th- two or three times both ways. Yeah. Um, the third and final trip finally kicked in and activated her powers. Or warped her uh, genetically to yeah. have these powers. Either one, it's fine. Perfectly fine. Zero problems. Yeah. Uh, I and think then, that's a very interesting way of introducing people like this. Uh, like, that's a that's a really cool idea. Totally fine. Yeah, and then you have the finale where yes. a lot happens. <laughs> um, a lot happens, and fortunately, very little of it is a fight scene. Uh, like, I think I think maybe only like 15 minutes of the of the like 45 minute program is dedicated to Wanda fighting Agatha. Yeah. Uh, well, you do have uh, vision versus white vision. Yes. And um, which basically comes down to him talking himself down. That was I liked that. I really liked that. I know that. it was like so how nice. He, you he have heroes like, who understand who have a conversation. It's like, oh, we can talk this through. Yes, we can. Okay, let's do that. Let let's run some logic here, and they uh, like he he basically makes the the other vision understand that actually you're technically vision. You just need your memories back. So we now I don't know when they'll bring it up again, but essentially the other vision, the real one, is back. Yes, which again, one of the least important parts of the entire show was yeah, that's he, how they he, reintroduced Vision. Like, because that was actually an interesting idea is how, like, when the episode where he, where Vision untaps Agatha, uh, he tries to go outside of the barrier and he starts falling apart. And it's understood the only way Vision can survive is while he's inside the hex. Yeah. And, and so uh, that sets up a, an interesting uh, concept like if the hex ever does come down wanda will lose her entire family and again it's why i think the agatha stuff just absolutely doesn't need to be there that that's definitely uh, i can tell you right now it was definitely it was setting up for i believe part uh, a season two and uh some of Doctor Strange, uh the new Doctor Strange movie. Possibly this does they, not need a season two though. Well, they name drop uh Stephen Strange and yep. then um Well they name drop the Sorcerer Supreme. Let's yeah, be clear there. Uh and then Some pedantic you, asshole's gonna be on us if <laughs> if we don't. Yeah. Well you then have Wanda also start actually using magic and like runes and stuff like that and yeah. uh she grabs the uh the the book of the dam the dark toe the dark home dark home i'm sorry yes she she grabs that and at the like the very very end like she is going through it and reading it yes but that that jumps over like the best part of the entire episode and something that I think it built the entire series built to very, very effectively, which was uh, Wanda having to say goodbye to Vision and their children. Yeah. And it was super heartbreaking. Yeah, it was. That was powerful. It that was like I haven't like, I haven't actually felt a whole lot of anything watching a Marvel movie like even the ones I super enjoy, I just kind of sit there and go, these are fun. I I have, I enjoy them. And this is something where I was like, this is genuinely heartfelt. And it's sad. And it's great. Yeah, like when she, she tucks her kids in and then that barrier is just getting closer and closer. Yeah. And she's like shutting everything down. And it's like, oh man, you know what's happening. Yeah. Like, you don't see it on screen, but you know those kids are fading away, and then Vision slowly fades away, and it, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it got gen- me. it's a genuinely good gut punch. 
And it's one you know is coming and you're expecting it, but at the same time, it still has its weighty impact. And I was I was just there, I'm like, it got me to thinking, I don't think this would have existed if it didn't have the Marvel property backing it. And that's really sad. Because this is a, a genuinely interesting show. It's a genuinely interesting concept. But I don't think it would have gotten any kind of push if it didn't have a massively successful franchise backing its name. Probably not. And that that really makes me mad. Well, I mean, uh, no offense, but, you know, what can you do <laughs> besides, you know, you pitch an idea for a show and... I know, I know. It's cogs in the machine, man. The machine sucks. I'm just going to say that. The machine sucks and it needs to be torn down and replaced. But that's well, neither Sean, here nor there. Uh, long story short, why you they rage sequel, against it, Sean. They sequel bait. Uh, yeah, well, fuck you. Uh, won't do what you tell me. There. Uh, they sequel bait with a potential another season with Wanda reading the Dark Home while another version of her makes tea? Yeah, that was weird. Um, but you hear her children. You hear her children her. yell in, in a much smaller, less necessary uh end credit sting we uh see the scrolls are there and they want to interview uh monica rambo well they're they say somebody wants to see you and they point up to space which basically i believe they've already confirmed she's going to be in captain marvel 2 okay like we've known the scrolls are on earth for a minute because they were also at the end of uh uh, far from home. Can can I can I rant? Can I rant on something here for a second? Sure. Why why aren't the scrolls evil? I mean, uh, I know on a surface level it's because we already know the Kree are evil, but the Kree and the scrolls can both be evil just in different ways. And in this feels like a very limited view of how people in general operate. Like I, I get that these aren't meant to be deep. Uh, Tan philosophical tangents into how the human psyche works and how you can apply that to different species. But at the same time, it feels so flat. I believe we are getting a, at least a rogue faction of them um, because they have, uh, they are doing some version of secret invasion. I, I don't, I don't know that like, like that's already been confirmed. They're they're doing some version of secret invasion. Yeah, watch it. Watch it actually be the Kree or some shit that's manipulating the scrolls behind it or something. I don't know. I think they're doing it as a television show though. Uh, maybe it'll actually have time to breathe and figure itself out then. But all in they, all, they, uh, well, sorry. They they're doing a lot of Marvel television. <laughs> yeah. Well, with theaters still in flux, which, quite honestly, they were not in the best of shape before COVID, but now the, or, uh, the pandemic, uh, future Sean, bleep that, because you can't say that on uh, YouTube, apparently. they The algorithm gets pissy with you. Uh, but yeah, like theaters weren't in the best position before all this happened, so like TV seems like a natural exploration for things like this. They are doing a six episodes of it, hmm. of Secret Invasion. Oh, uh, we'll just have to see what happens then. And they're doing it after She-Hulk and Moon Knight? I, I don't know. I haven't looked at a roadmap in months for what they're doing. But I'm that's okay. I'm looking at the roadmap right now. <laughs> Take your eyes off the roadmap, Jared. Look at what's in front of you and ahead of you. And what's in front of us is a darn good little show. One or two small hiccups, but I, I I feel that that's more of a personal gripe than what most people would have. I think the vast majority of people are going to enjoy the absolute hell out of this, and I hope that it leads to expecting more out of programming like this and them at least delivering something bigger than a loud obnoxious action movie every six to eight months well we got a week and a half oh and god then, 
and then uh, Falcon Winter Soldier comes out. Now, and speaking of loud, obnoxious action movie, <laughs> we we get to see the unique relationship between Bucky Barnes and Sam Wilson in a post Steve Rogers world. I give it to the end of the series until they reintroduce Captain America, like Steve Rogers, they, Captain America. I was about to say there, there's some guy who is going to be like a fake like U.S. agent or some crap like that. Like he is going to be the new Captain America. I could see it and all that. Uh, apparently, Chris Evans may possibly be renegotiating his contract and come back. So maybe, maybe not. Mm, um, I don't know. I don't know. But it's uh, we have that, and then. Uh, I think they're doing the same thing after um, after w- Falcon Winter Soldier is over. I think they're going to give us like a week, two le- weeks, and we're going to go to Loki. Jared, I quit. That's it, everybody. Show's over. I'm closing the channel down. We're not talking about movies and TVs no more. It's all, <laughs> I'm all done with it. You're, you're quitting because of the Loki television show? I'm, I'm quitting because of Loki. He's officially broken me. Tom Hiddleston, you win. I know we've had a feud going for years now. I say it now, you win. If you want to come on the show and, and proclaim your victory, email me. I'll, I'll accept you on the show, Tom. We'll meet in the middle, as it were. <laughs> Do you know if you could actually get him to show up on this show, you would get like a billion. Fuck no, I couldn't get Tom Hiddleston on this piece of shit show. I know you couldn't, but it would be amazing. It would be great. I'd love to talk to Tom Hiddleston. He seems like a really fun guy. He's not coming on here. You think he doesn't have better shit to do than to talk to two chuckle fucks like us? Hey, it's the power of the internet, man. Anything is possible. Yeah, you never know. But what we do know know is that if you enjoyed what you were listening to here, be sure and give a like and subscribe, and we'll be back here next time. I'm not actually quitting. Take that, Tom. You don't win this day. Next time, Tom. Sean, yeah, Sean rules supreme this day. Next time. Next time, Gadget. Next time. (laughs) We'll see you next time, everybody. Later. Later.